Hello, hello, everybody. Just lowering Spotify's volume a little bit. But how are we all doing on this fine, fine day? But I actually moved my camera. It's on the wrong side. My camera's meant to be right here. Let's just move it right here, actually. That's better. I like it right here. That is a lot better. But how is everybody doing on this fine day? Hopefully everybody's had a phenomenal time. A nice weekend. Things have been going well. Your WoW grind has gone well. You've got the drops you've wanted. The loot you wanted. You've been able to actually get the stuff you want. For example, the Maraud on Dagger. In my case, I did not. But nonetheless, it's good to see everyone. We do have quite a lot to cover today. As you guys can see on screen, this is Noma, which is the incorrect one. One of the main topics that even in the stream title is Melee Meta is back. And is it, which is the interesting question. It is, but I will, dis I will dive into that one in a bit. This is today's chat list. Today's topics. There's quite a bit, as you can see. We have classes and tiers. Melee meta is back. That's the first thing we're covering today. But then after that, we have when to prepare for phase four. And what should you do to prepare for phase four? Again, very simple. But also at the same time, except for paladins, corrector. Then we have blue posts, nerfs, buffs, and changelog. Because some nerfs are going live. They'll be live either today at 1 p.m. or Tuesday after the reset. And I'm not sure when the changes are going live, but we'll cover them. Then the last point of phase three for today's stream is will they add any more content or will there be any major changes? From there, we dive straight into phase four. Melee or cast the meta. Phase four, will they add Pally to Horde and Shaman to Alliance? And then the last point is the crackpot theory time. So again, quite a bit to dive into, quite a bit to discuss. But you all know why you're watching an Ebonheart stream. And it's a very simple reason. You guys want conspiracies and insanity and predictions. Literally anything but Torn for Paladins. See, I'm not saying it's going to be in Phase 4. I'm not even going to say it's going to be in Phase 5. But it's definitely going to be there in Classic Plus, whatever the next season is. And I'll explain why once we get to that point later on. But that is towards the end of the stream, so you guys got to stick around to find out. You know, it's like one of those stick around for part two to find out what Ebonheart has to say. But we are going to dive right into the opening. Classes and tier, melee meta is back. Forsaken Paladins could be cool, but there's a solid law reason for Torum Paladins. But like I said, I'll be covering that later. Torums are way too goofy. Hey, nobody said they had to look good, my man. No one said they had to look good. But diving right into the number one DPS, the phase system itself. What is actually good in phase three? And I'm not even going to say I'm sad to see this because I kind of expected it. And I'm just going to zoom in so you guys can see a bit more clearly. We have Alondo at 1600 DPS, the number one warrior. His raid works a bit differently than every other, like the way he plays. So I'm not going to count him for the most part because his whole raid is built around giving him utmost perfection when it comes to DPS. You can, you can even see that the guild is literally a 99. But Orlando is a giga chat. I'll give him that. But if you look at the list, let me zoom out a bit so we can see more people at the same time. Aside from the occasional rogue, 
and the occasional enhanced Simon of Feral. It is literally Warrior and Melee Hunter. Back to back to back. Throw in your Rogues. Here's one Rep Paladin from a Chinese server. Then you, or Taiwan, but they're going back to China with Blizzard opening Chinese servers again. In the top 100, we have one, fer we have, is that one Feral? No. Two Feral DPS, one Prot Warrior, one Rep Pally. And everybody else is Enhanced Shaman or Warrior with, with Rogues. And this number continues a staggeringly large amount. It goes all the way from the top 100 to, I think it's, you don't see a cast until the top 300. One ranged hunter here. Yep. The first cast that you see is a warlock at 317. This is Taco. Essentially, the time of ranged is over. And it's, in my personal opinion, only going to get worse. Even as they tweak classes, melee simply scales better. Like for a caster to do what a melee does, as a caster, you have to have so much more and you are so much more gear reliant than a warrior. Even a bad warrior can pump 700 DPS similar to a 90 passing mage or warlock solely because of how the game is built and designed. And yeah, some of these people have Songflower, Sage, all the buffs they need to pass and pump that big dick energy. But it doesn't change the facet of the game that as the phases progress, Melee will only get more dominant. Now, Ranged Hunter will start to fall off, and it already has. But Melee Hunter will continue to scale solely because, as I said, again, Melee scales so much harder than every other uh, gameplay style. It doesn't change until TBC and Wrath onwards when casters start having the gear and the stat and item stats that makes them able to keep up with that level of scaling. So for the entirety of the rest of Season of Discovery, unless runes come out that drastically change the way casters play, it is going to stay in melee meta. Legit, just a single caster in the top, nope, two casters. Three casters. Three casters in the top 500. These are the best plays in the world. Quotation, quotation marks best. A lot of people are able to be here. But it just it does come to a metric of how much time and effort you want. So being top 100 is impressive. But it's not an impossible metric to hit. And do you think melee hunters get the nerf? Melee hunters will get a nerf. But it won't be drastic enough. To make a difference to melee hunters being top three best classes. Like I'm going to bring out the notepad. The trusty notepad. Meta in classic sod going forward. Let me read chat. Time to level those 25 warrior rogue alts. They could tune the gear of 60 to be... They'd have to do a huge gear itemization change. And the problem with that red solo is not only does the gear need to be changed, the gear also needs to, your, your base stats have to be tweaked as well to allow for that. So the way casters scale is very gear dependent, whereas warrior and melees and like rogues aren't as gear dependent as they are level dependent because of the way their stats work. The core stat, uh, the core stats of the game in general is the problem of it. So because of that, it becomes a metric of no matter how much they tweak the, the, the stats for casters, we'll fall behind 
until they change it how they did it in TBC and Wrath onwards, at which point we're not playing on the classic client, we're playing on the TBC or the Wrath client. But let's dive into this. Um, so, Warrior, um, one Warrior, two Rogue, three Melee Hunter, four Enhance, Rest. Now, I gotta break it like this. Top three can interchange. Four to six can interchange. And Feral is the only wild cat. Feral can jump between top three and top six, depending on buffs and itemization. Feral is very, Feral is one of the few classes that is kind of item, buff, etc. dependent. Because you need to power shift and you need to actually time your abilities and stuff like that. Casters will be underneath every other spell. Every melee spell. Even if the occasional caster can perform. They will not be able to save in the higher bracket also i gotta add ranged hunter this is right here on screen this is how it's going to be now Could they, perchance, make it so that casters are not as ass? Yes. The problem becomes, tuning casters is a very difficult situation. Because what they need to do damage is raw system changes. Exactly, Daniel. It is a design flaw. It's not just the melee are gear dependent, it's white hits, no resists. Well, I mean, they still do resist, but like, as a caster, if our cast gets resisted, we don't do white damage, we do no damage. So that's a three second or two second or four second cast that is gone. Then you have to cast again and it builds up and it's very much a design flaw in the way classic works. Casters will fall off as the phase goes on. Yeah, no, it's... Rage Hunter is going to stay here. Because Rage Hunter has gotten some buffs. But it's not enough for me to give Rage Hunter a thing. Could be replaced with Boomy, etc. I'm going to cut this off. There we go. Um, it's just sadly the design of Classic. And it's not going to change even if we want it to. Because it would require so much effort on the part of the Classic dev team. To completely tweak the whole baseline of the game. It's only going to get worse, Erica. As fights get longer, it gets worse. The 200 AP aura makes them mandatory. That is true. Um, let me make this a tiny bit smaller so I can type some more. As boss fights get longer or shorter, melee will do more damage. It's, it's just sadly a metric of there is no recovery. Even with major room changes, casters will fall to the wayside. 
Now, people in chat, you could technically prove me wrong, but actually, we can check it. We can genuinely check it. It's party wide at the moment. Um, let me just look up one of my characters. Okay, here we go. Classic. Let's go to Molten Core. Phase one. Is there a way to open up Molten Core in phase one? How am I meant to check Molten Core in Phase 1? Molten Core Phase 1 Classic Logs. Vanilla, here we go. Classic Error, here we go, perfect. Scroll past Season of Mastery, okay, so here we go. Right here. Boss Damage. Season zero. Okay, here we go. Um, and Chapman helps tanks a lot for trash, certain boss mechanics like the defenders. It would be nice if Blizzard took FFB off the belt rune and put on helms and mages could have hot streak, but that would be a nice change, Dave. That is the path of phase one because Feral doesn't exist till max. Yeah, okay, that is fair. Um, okay, here we go. This is phase one, by the way. Yes, this is every buff in existence, but this is phase one. This is quite literally phase one of classic. Okay, so then we can go. All right, cool. So let's go back. And then let's look at Blackwing Lair. Again, all warrior with the occasional rogue. The entirety of classic. Every phase. It doesn't get better for casters. For no point of classic did casters even get to the top 500, aside from the occasional one person. And this will continue into Season of Mastery, it'll continue into Season of Discovery. It continues like this until TBC. And that won't change for the entirety of Classic, unless the whole Classic client changes itself. Exactly. It's genuinely built and designed around Melee, because they didn't expect Melee to ever pull this shit off. Like the developers never designed the game with the idea that Melee Warriors were going to go and get every goddamn buff under the goddamn planet like the what classic players will go to is insane but if you go to tbc that's where it starts to change TBC phase one classic logs. How do I scroll back to like vanilla? Oh, that's vanilla. Wrath. Expansions, Burning Crusade. Karazam. As you can see in TBC, it's all casters. And it'll continue for most of TBC like that, because TBC onwards, that melee, like the melee heaviness 
goes. But unless they change the whole client. So we can just do Black Temple. Because Black Temple is a good one. Hunters, of course. Rain Hunter. And mostly Casters. Rage Hunter and Casters are the very rare melee. Yeah, no, at the current pace it is right now, going back to Classic, and this is Sunken Temple, it's genuinely going to reach a point of Warriors aren't just going to scale hard, they're going to scale disgusting. Warriors will only get stronger. So if I bring back up the notepad. Until uh, melee meta is the future. Let me zoom in. Unless the developers drastically buff casters. Classic is tuned around melee because of how the game is designed. Did they carry everyone in Black Temple in earlier phases? You yeah, know, this is still phase three, by the way, Blade Kaiser. So it's still all a melee hunter, not melee, ranged hunter and casters. Yeah. Warriors are still here, but like. The idea, armor too, that's a valid point. Attempting to balance melee leads to melee being drastically stronger than casters. For casters to be even at level 60, melee can, uh, melee have to get zero new runes and buffs. Every buff to cast to melee makes raids less caster friendly. Even if they add mechanics to make casters necessary, people will only bring bare minimum necessary for mechanics. Welcome to Classic and Classic's player base. This is genuinely, like, it sucks for me to say, but this is how people play the game. Even if they change the armor values, you can itemize for level 6 the armor value. And melee will still do really big dick damage because of the scaling. They will have to balance raids in a way where everyone is viable and some classes do better on some things. So if you bring a full raid of warriors or rogues, you should not be able to clear the content. And in my opinion, that's the only way that you can make things scale correctly or fairly. If they make it so that every class can clear every boss, it's over for casters because warriors will just scale better. Execution, um, heroic strike, just the way they work. White hits alone. Like, unless casters can white hit suddenly, which would be interesting. Um, aggro is a good factor there. Yeah, it's just... If they... Mm, I don't know because... Exactly. It, it does look like it might be like a very heavy ret meta going into the next phase. So, um, ret can go to one 
to spot one, depending on um, shooting. Right, true. This is only for pugging, but this is also for any world first guild, sweaty guild, elite guild, guilds that think that elite and sweaty, but they really aren't, but they think they are. You know, melee hunters are disgusting. It's genuinely you could bring a green melee hunter and they'd be doing six, seven hundred DPS. Um, and yeah, tanks have so much aggro; it's irrelevant. Uh, why do I say that for Rhett Russell? Um, yeah, at 60, it's going to be nutty. Um, the reason I say that, Russell, is because of a simple facet. Um, as they scale, i got to zoom in. As they scale raids up to 50, up to 60, certain uh, affinities, like boss armor, um magical resistances etc will make certain classes i.e rep paladin scale very hard because they now can hit like a warrior but they also have magical damage it's not a guarantee but Rhett will, alongside Enhance, scale very well into the late game. If Green Warrior didn't pump. Hey Almo, today we are discussing several things, but right now we are discussing melee meta going forward. Because, oh shit, my Roomba's going off. Let me turn that shit off real quick. Can you fucking stop? What the fuck? I picked you up. Don't stop. Turn off! Why did you turn off? Apologies for technical difficulties. My Roomba is refusing to turn off. I, I can't turn it off. Okay, finally turned off. My Roomba finally turned off. But no, going back. Um, back to the melee meta is the future. As I was literally saying, um, but I got to catch up on chat. Um, no, no, I was yelling at my Roomba. It was just sitting there spinning, constantly going, and I'm like, I'm, you're in the air. You're not goddamn Simba, turn off. Nonetheless. Um, I'm far more common to balance post 60 when all the runes are in place. They will have to rebalance everything that comes 60. That's actually a whole point. Um, uh, the entire game will have to be rebalanced at level 60. Balance right now is essentially non-existent some classes are just drastically better than others at 60 melee casters tanks and healers will see major reworks to their runes etc to simulate and attempt at balance. Will it work? Probably not because the runes are so unbalanceable. Will it work? Probably not. Runes on top of basic classic engine problems make the game essentially nightmarish to balance. Um, 
See them the no kill groups on record that I have faith in nothing. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's incursions are in a rough spot right now. We'll cover a bit more on incursions in, in later, but like incursions were great in theory. Execution, the classic player base ruined it. Not the devs' fault, but they should know the classic player base and how we play the game. And fun is not necessary. Fun comes secondary to efficiency because we are classic players. And fun means fuck all if I can't be efficient. So, classic. Um, I feel like they use that we don't have all the runes as an excuse at the moment. Yeah, that being said, the actual class variety is still far better than error as is. Oh yeah, no, there's class variety at least. I will give them that. A lot more classes are viable. Certain classes are still just way better. And they will have to address it, Almo. They have to completely rebalance it. Um, I'm waiting for Sixty to show the side if I switch my main. Yeah, Sixty is gonna decide if I go Warrior, Warlock, Shaman, Rogue, Druid. Like I'm a tank main. I'm playing balance right now because it's sad. It doesn't matter in the long term. The classic plus season of bullshit, season of magic, season of entitlement, whatever the next season's called. We're gonna have to re-roll eventually. But when we do re-roll. I do want to pick a class that's more permanent in the way I want to play, so long as it's a tank. Um, I'd rather level in Biadi and get geared in the curtains than kill nothing. I feel you, Parker. Some reworking can be done in the raid too. I hope they don't make the MC 20 man and that's it. They should be extra mechanics that may benefit casters. No, it wouldn't have been balanced at all in Noma. Lower armor would have been heavy towards melee. Yeah. How we are meta slaves and push us towards fun. They can't. You cannot balance the game around fun because the players will not play for fun. The game has to be balanced around fun because, because the player base does uh, players does not give a single shit about fun. Even if we want to say, hey, I play for fun, we're the minority that, uh, we're the minority. People want to simply put, be the right class, because no one wants to be left behind. Being left behind or picking the wrong class is a genuine fear of a lot of players. Um, yeah, exactly, Daniel. The devs' first question should be, how will the classic player base exploit this system mechanic item because they will and like they need to push us to have fun but to make us have fun they have to gut efficiency so we have to pick fun but if you gut efficiency you kill fun so they it's literally schrodinger's bullshit the devs don't have a solution. I don't even blame them for this because they designed incursions around being fun and it took all of six hours, six hours for the player base to realize I can exploit this into oblivion. And guess what we did as the classic player base? We exploited it and then said, the devs shouldn't have done this. But we exploited it because again, we... As a player base, Classic's been so over-designed, over-calculated like, and broken down that our immediate response, our immediate action, our immediate way of playing is to figure out how to break it so we can get the most value out of it because fun comes secondary to value. And for us to have fun, we have to break the game and extract that value. 
No, I agree. There's way more to the game than logs and meta chasing and min maxing. I'm just saying the player base has the mentality of chasing min maxing, of chasing meta. Yeah, true. That is true, Moronai. There's a boss that can only be killed by casters because you need all the all the like little the sheeping and all that stuff. Pull a Final Fantasy world map trick. Make the vision path the best one and fun one and have distraction paths that give you the illusion of choice. They could gouge and they could break the game down and tweak it around that, but it does come back to the situation of the player base will quite literally change, chase the meta because it's it is how we like to play. And like Cody Watson has a valid point. And Agrin has a valid point. There is more to the game than Warcraft logs, than efficiency, than speed. Yeah, they need to they need to have tweaked incursions to have been slightly less repetitive. Like incursions are a great base, and I think they're gonna improve it and make incursions way better in the future. But as they are right now, incursions were not it. But phenomenal idea, and I have mad respect for the devs for the attempt. Because they genuinely did a great idea. They just didn't... They didn't realize how much we would have exploited it. And then we went and exploited it super aggressively. And then they had to come back and be like, Well, I have to take this fun away from you all. If they kept sought at the WoW Classic level of difficulty, then there would be less min-max and gatekeeping. True. True, there would have been. Leveling fast equals head start at best spots for gathering resources, getting rare drops that are the highest level, etc. Um, Incursions need some sort of limit. They do need some sort of limit. True. Honestly, they could make AV... Mm. AV is a situation of... PvPers will kill it because they don't care about your fun. They care about their honor per hour. So AV could be made fun like that, but they will... Exp um, true. Actually... How to deal... With meta chases, min-maxes, and exploiters. An Ebon Heart Thesis. One. Make the efficient content the fun content. Two. Make the exploits be part of game design. So to exploit, you have to play. Three, leave the extra more fun content for people to do casually, but make it so that efficiency isn't broken because it takes time and group. Mm, that one needs work. Hmm. It's hard though, no matter how you look at it. Trying to make people not chase the meta literally involves redesigning the whole game. Essentially redesign the whole game and make classic plus. Is this the efficient way? It needs to be done, but can I give an example of content, one example that is both efficient and fun? Rating. Rating is the only content that is efficient and fun. Rating is the only content that is efficient and fun. 
PvP is only efficient and not fun. Because having fun at PvP means being efficient. Dungeon grinding is you have to clear the same dungeon 100 times, 50 times, 30 times. Until you get the item you need so you can make your raid more efficient. Honestly, like legit. Uh, figure out how to make the player base less focused on chase and more focused on community and fun. Difficulty level? Im fucking possible. Hmm. Um, Keep it easy. Sweatmasters have passing to sweat over. Difficult to give me credit by the player base with pass technically quickly. I love Boom Chicken. I, I play Boomkin right now because I don't want to play Feral at the moment, but I love I love Feral. But Boomkin's also good. Solo play is the problem. True. Um Solo play is the problem, but it is a good way. They can't remove solo play. Because not everybody always has time to log on and do two, three, four hours of group content. Sometimes people just want to fish or just want to grind some mobs. Or just want to do a bit of solo play in the open world or like solo grind in old dungeon. Removing solo play takes a soul element out of the game. They just need a design around the hamsters we are. You don't want to make raiding too efficient because you sacrifice the longevity of the raid. If anything, maybe ST is the most efficient raid in terms of generosity of raid jobs I've ever seen. True. Hmm. Damage me and the logs would have to go. They would find another way to check. People would figure out another way. But I do agree that there is some level of tweaking necessary there, Dave. Um, my point is that efficiency and fun are on the opposite end of the spectrum. If you make it efficient, you make it less fun by definition. It is true. Like that statement is honestly very true. Yeah, no, but Parker also has a valid point. Like, going back to the melee meta, it, it does become a question of, do people play Warriors because Warriors are fun? Or do people play Warriors because Warriors are efficient? Or are Warriors fun because they are efficient? Or do you only play a Warrior because you're trying to top the damage meters? And that ties into all forms of WoW content and the baseline level of content. Are you playing WoW because WoW is fun? Or are you playing WoW because hitting big numbers makes you feel good, thus you like to play WoW? The level of efficiency isn't what's important. Being the most efficient option is, even if rating is slow, if it's less slow for Epic Gear, then everything else is meta efficient. That's a valid point, Galshin. Yeah, that there is like truth to that right there. I love dailies back in Wrath. It was brain dead content I could do while watching movies and such. Incursions could have fit that if it was a daily quest grind. They can fix incursions like that. That is a decent fix to incursions. Make it a daily. You can only do five or ten quests a day, and then move on. I mean, in classic WoW, Warrior was one of the most, was one of the only fun classes of the game. Most of the classes were one button brain dead spam. Also true, Almo. That's also a valid counterpoint. Hmm. It's, for me, the way I view it is, I play Bear and Feral and Boomkin and like Resto Druid, even when it's inefficient, because I love Druid. No matter how unfun Druid is, Druid is what I go. When Druid is unplayable, I play my Warrior Tank. When Warrior Tank is unplayable, I don't play. I know a lot of people that play Warrior play like the average Warrior player um, is not a Warrior player 
They are a pass DPS meter player. Thus, making other classes good equals making less warrior meta. Less melee meta? It's questionable. I will always play Paladin unless it's a Tauren. I mean, hey look, Paladin is great, Tauren is best. If you don't play a Tauren Paladin, come on man, what you're doing are wrong. Actually, perhaps the opposite is more correct. Most people would enjoy Druid, wouldn't play it in Classic because it sucks, that just feels bad. True. Players would have lost their minds, however, they should have implemented lockouts on normal dungeons to get people to branch out for their own good and prevent burnout. Who? 10 dungeons per day? Would be interesting because it would remove the reset meta. You would have to clear the full dungeon. Ooh, that's interesting. No, they wouldn't do that though. That's way too much for them to do. That would like piss off so many players. I think both exist, but because Warriors and Saint OP absorbs all the meta players too. True. I mean, honestly, it's shit. I mean, I can't deny it. It does, like it, like I said, it becomes a point of efficiency is fun now. Because efficiency is now synonymous with meta. And by being meta, you get to have fun. So, let's open another tab. This was honestly, I'm not gonna lie, this was meant to be a 15 minute topic, but we deep dive in. Is, do players chase the meta? Because meta is uh, efficient? Or do players chase the meta because being efficient is fun? And if being efficient equals having fun, to have fun, do you need to be meta? What is this? Aristotle bullshit we're doing in World of Warcraft. God damn. Um, I didn't mind being in the middle of the pack as warriors in raid two and phase two. You need to lock things if make things more rewarding. It's quest I quest XP bar. Dungeon meta is fun for five mana friends. It is, especially ZF for example. I ran it eighty three times on power to get the sword. Even if it was ten lockouts a day, I wouldn't have made the first raid and pulled fourteen hundred DPS. True. Um. Check out my SD logs, Big Bear. Let me check you out, Big Bear, real quick. Let, might as well. Let me see what my boy Big Bear is doing. Big Bear. Um, are you Lone Wolf, Wild Growth, or Chaos Bolt? Exactly, if Zia, for example. Yeah. What would all the rogues and feral druids, uh, if they cannot farm BID for the rarest one that drops their belt, if they're capped? Yeah. I don't think capping is the way. I think capping is the wrong way of solving it. But there does need to be alternatives to grinding one dungeon or instance forever. It's Big Bear Cutie. My man, look at that damage. God damn, you're popping off. My boy. My boy, look at this. This is my boy, Big Bear. 23 in the world, you fucking giga chad, beautiful boom chicken. I love you right there. This this is cool. This right here is cool. 23rd in the world. Um, I think it's a small part of the player base that chases the meta and they do that because the content is pissy and they want to challenge, so they challenge themselves to chase the meta. People want to feel like they accomplished something. You can do that with difficulty or too many people could have a difficulty. That leaves efficiency as the other way to feel accomplished. It's a cultural thing. Blame Asmongold and the big dick DPS. Valid point, Gordian. I don't know necessarily that it's Asmongold's fault. He's just like the most public of the names of the people that kind of tried that stuff. You can also stop it. Uh, you can also do it with time sinks like rep grinds and world tours. But people just complain about those because it takes time. True. So. It becomes. Melee meta. Because melee is 20% better and scales better. Because again, 
people want to be challenged. But you cannot make classic hard. Because the, the challenge of classic is not difficulty. It's how fast and easy, or it's how fast you can clear and how much damage you can do. So, DPS meters and logs equals meta equals fun. God damn, I figured it out. We did the formula. Part of being the meta slave mentality is because of how big of an advantage ahead it gives you. I don't care if I'm questing as if I lost two days of grinding previous in the first lockout. That, that's a valid point. I mean, hey, I like seeing myself on top of the damn unit as soon as I downloaded one, which was way more, which is way before I ever heard of Asmongold. Yeah. The way to fix melee meta is have melee beat bad in early phases and scale up. Melee just has better buff synergy. True. DPS meters and pass sites. Get rid of those and you have no meta. Look at Final Fantasy XIV. No meters. People play what they want because they have no idea what is best or who is doing the most damage. It's a valid point, Kyle. Technically, anybody can play any class Final Fantasy XIV. But didn't they make damage meters and then they got banned by the developers? So they figured out other ways to chase the meta? I could be wrong. Yeah, but mild tweaks break a lot of metrics because a mild tweak with runes 0.2 AP scaling could take range hunters from being strong to disgustingly strong but at the same time it's because the classes are so cake in with their design philosophies and the, and the way they were designed that even a small change could have long reaching repercussions and changes to how that class works it's why they use runes instead of default class changing. You can change an ability, but if you change how a class scales, you get some broken gameplay or design that doesn't work effectively. Yeah, no, you can't ban logs with DPS meters because the players will find another way to do it. And at the same time, even if they couldn't find another way to do it, a lot of people would stop playing because the whole reason they play is to chase the meta. I mean, it's fair, Kyle. I'm like, it is interesting. I just let my dog out. He wanted to go outside the door, so I let him outside the door. I I do think that there's a different like culture when it comes to different games. So even if they kind of mesh or work initially or on the same level or the same design, because Final Fantasy XIV is a better designed wow for the most part like a retail wow at least in terms of like grinding collecting open world stuff but classic is a whole different game um it does it just the whole situation comes down to the very simple and very very base point of yeah, exactly. People aren't going to play Final uh, Wow over Final Fantasy 14. They'll just play Final Fantasy 14. I do think this, the sole solution is the player base has to keep itself in check, and they have to design less rewarding but more fun content. So, no matter how you look at it, there is no great solution because the problem is the player base. I mean, it, it's a valid point, Kyle. Yeah, it's... Hmm. Like I said, just the, the way to solve it is difficult. In phase 100, at point 0.4 AP scale and better point 0.6, they scale, they nerf both down. If they appeal to retail players and make classic sort of raid hard, they will lose the classic players like Uldua did and they'll just go back to classic era. Yeah, that, that is the problem. Classic players, as I said right here. You cannot make classic hard because classic players will not play a hard game. So you have to make the game easy, but take time. 
And then the way classic players have fun is by speeding through the content because to them a difficult raid is not fun an easy raid that they can clear faster is fun people don't want a retail like situation where you wipe 800 times on the boss they don't want mythic raiding in classic because the classic player base doesn't want that level of difficulty they want their difficulty to come from how much they can prepare and make the content faster. That's also true, Galshin. Like, classic is very difficult to balance because of how it works. The only way you could have balance is TBC client, where they change things around to make the client work better. that's a valid point Alma. you also can't save the player base from itself because the player base wants to play like this and it works this is the most this is the shittiest part about this is it works so because of this works it becomes a situation of can you even fix this because he even exists if this is what the player base want if the majority want to play like this is fixing it even the right thing or worth doing it's it's interesting we can start balancing sword by giving a lion shaman that's actually one of the next topic points honestly we might be getting alliance uh, shamans and horde paladins i'll explain that later because we still have to finish this for now but pbc was the best version of the game difficulty preparedness class specialization professional development i will say i will agree and like even boston has a great point half of us are dads who got four hours a night to play we don't want another job a lot is a huge portion of the classic player base. Like I follow it to people as well, but my analytics quite literally prove it. My analytics is like very large numbers of. I'm going to bring it out here real quick. I'm going to put it on this screen and I'll show you guys what I'm saying is if you go to the analytics and then you go to the audience tab. Let me hide this. I'm gonna shit. I'm going to move my camera for a second. This is the average viewership, over about a hundred thousand views. As you can see here, the amount of people that play classic, essentially 90% of the classic player base is over 25. When you have such a large number of the player base being over 25, it means they have a job, family, kids, mortgage, rent, bills, this, that. You got to keep your social circle work. You got to do all these little things. And it leads to a problem of... I'm going to put this back because I don't want to leak all my like metrics and analytics, but... It is simply how the classic player base plays because... And I'm going to put my camera back here. There we go um it's, it's just how we play like there's, there's nothing we can really do about it you're the uh, you're the woman there's a woman in chat god damn it's a uh, that's that's what surprises me how's my audience 99.5 percent male do you know how many women play well am i that like aren't women friendly like even my wife doesn't like my content like, goddamn, and like, she, to be fair, my wife doesn't watch any YouTube content. Like, my wife's not like a wow. Like, she, she plays the game, she understands, she knows things. She used to be what, top 100 worldwide Shadow Priest. But, like, god fucking damn. I feel like I am very friendly to women and men. I don't feel like my audience should be 99.5% male. Like, goddamn. All I'm saying. It's weird. The sausage fest. But nonetheless, it's the love of Silvermane. True, to be fair, my 
my rants about white mane, my rants about Sally white mane probably did drive almost every single woman away from me. I don't regret it. I'm not going to apologize for what, saying what I said. I, I'm not going to apologize. I actually missed quite some like shit in chat though. Let me see. I think um, a lot of this is people being mad about how others play the game more than the game itself. Some people want meta plays to be forced into playing the way that they think and they wouldn't just quit. Yeah, that is true, Galshin. I don't think there is a s solution. I think at this point, people have to play how they want and just accept it. I understand the TBC fans. It was small, heroic, and were terrible. Rating was the only fun thing I like about TBC. So now chat is mostly like discussing how the things like, like people's opinions on like TBC, classic, wrath, meta, hardcore, casual. At the end of the day, I think it just comes down to people are going to play how they want to play and they're going to play what is fun to them and nothing else. So there is no like solution to the meta question. Um, it is funny how 25, 30 year olds also have the time to watch three hour ebb and stream. It's only three days a week, to be fair. I don't stream that much. I'm not one of those 12 hour streamers. I stream three hours, four hours when I'm feeling spicy. So I feel like because my content and streams are so condensed and packed, it's easier to digest for a lot of people. And I assume most people here are working from home or watching me at the office, to be fair. Like, I don't think most people are like actually like doing nothing but watching my stream. I think most people are doing things on the side while they watch me. And that is fair, Alma. It, it probably was just because most YouTube WoW audience members that are just men. Um... That that's a funny point, Galshin. It's probably true. Most people aren't even probably 50. Like most people complaining probably don't even actually play the game anymore. I wouldn't be surprised if most people doing the complaining stopped playing a while ago. Quotation marks working. I feel you, Draken. I feel you on that front. Streamer, different than playing a game, you can be tabbed that work. True, if your boss works, buy alt tab. Like, just open up Excel and then alt tab off of Excel. Or if you're an engineer, if you're a Jira board, or I don't know, if you're a manager, having to look at the Jira board and see which one of your employees is actually doing what they're meant to be doing on Jira. I'm from Europe and I watch you after home, after I come home from work. That's fair, Almo. Yeah, I, I have a pretty decent uh, European audience. I have Germans, uh, Scandinavians, some British, almost no French, but I have a very healthy German, British, and Scandinavian audience, which is surprising to me. But I, I'm kind of surprised that I do, I won't lie. Um, my original first character was a dwarf shaman that they removed, so I switched to dwarf hunter. That, that's fair, Blade, guys, that, that's fair. Europe plus, yeah, Europe plus. I'm in a warehouse right now, can confirm. My man's moving boxes while watching me. He's got me on like a little like the forehead helmet where you put the phone for light and he's watching my stream as he's moving boxes. Honestly, I think it's also Sermi Sweats complaining and act like they're speaking for casuals. Yeah, you stream in a very good EU time. That's fair, honestly. It's the time frame that works best for me. Like, I can't stream like like... Like, I stream 9 to 5, essentially. That's my working schedule. So I go from, like, I start streaming at about 10, 11 a.m. my time. And I stream till about 1, 2 p.m. And then I stop. I don't ever go past 2 p.m. because it's not worth it for me. I feel like if I did longer streams, I would lose my audience. Because people like the compact content. They like to have the news broken down, information, theory crafting, all that stuff done in a concise manner. And then go about the days. If I was literally turning on my stream and streaming for 12 hours of wow gameplay, where I'm where I'm quiet for half of it, or I'm just ranting and raging, like you know, like some streamers do. I don't want to say any names because I'm not trying to start drama with anybody. Um, I don't feel like my audience would like it as much, so I I do this, all of this right here. Um, Boomy's time to switch to Feral looks like. Oh yeah, Boomy's gonna switch to Feral. We can still perform. But Feral is where it's at. If you're trying to chase numbers, you go Feral. It's just what it is. Like, if you're trying to get good numbers, you go Feral. I am going to lower the temperature. Um, 
let me lower the temperature with my Google Home. Because god fucking damn, it's hot in here. What would you think of the casual just means cater to me specifically? I will say... Okay, I lowered the temperature on the top floor. Um, I will say... Most people complaining probably do not play the game. Like, you know what? I'm going to bring up a metric here. I'm going to show you guys something. Right, let me click on Season of Discovery. Progress. So you see how there's only 2,500 guilds that have cleared Sunken Temple? Most people complaining are here. The people that play in this bracket over here, who haven't been able to clear content, who have been struggling to clear content, they're the people that complain because a lot of people that are loud online allowed because they won't play a game how it's meant to be played they expect the game to be played how it caters to them like there's a very simple way of putting this the loudest voice is typically the least interested in playing it is what it is though it is what it is but we it is time to finally end the meta conversation and move on to the next topic of the day when to prepare for phase four and what should you do? I'm casual during the week. Most of my playtime is eight to ten hours because of raid. That, that is a lot of people, Blake Rider. But the difference is being casual and being bad is two separate things. And a bad player, I'm going to put it this way. Not every uh, casual is a bad player, but every bad player is a casual. Does that make sense? So people get upset at casuals. Because casuals dictate how the player base or the online, like, like the metrics are. That's how the elite 1% or streamers or whatever go on Twitter, say this, say that, do this, do that. It works vice versa as well. Bottom 1%, top 1%. But now we're going to the next topic. When to prepare for phase 4 and what should you do? Again, that's the saying. Not every bad play not every casual is a bad player, but every bad player is a casual. Phase four will likely take 12 weeks at most. Release date at latest is. I wanna bring up the calendar again. We already did this, but I gotta check it out again. So it came out April 4th. So a second. So pre-questing. Is it worth it? Fuck, I zoomed out way too much. Need at least 5,000 gold for my epic mounts. Nah. My characters are running around in like cheap mounts. I ain't paying shit. That's why it's June. Because it like they have to stagger the content. So um let me do this right here. Why June 13th? Because they are now staggering content. I Kata, you know, like uh, Plunderstorm, Phase 3, Kata, Wow Remix, Phase 4. So, pre questing, is it worth it? Very likely, no. 50% XP buff for 50 to 60 equals very basic prequest into incursion 
spam or dungeon spam. So, when you have these two options, if no incursions equals dungeon spam with more prequests, if yes incursions, no quest, just incursion. Again, it's not necessarily mandatory, by the way, Blade Kai. It's more of a, for the average efficient, chasing for their main character. What should you do? Um, you should still pre-quest and pre-grind just in case there is no alternative. That's a fair point, Galshin. That's very valid right there. Um, a lot of people don't want to bring bad classes because bad classes typically attract... Like, I'm, I'm going to do a take right here, honestly. You know what? This is just the... I'm going to full theme this and I'm going to try to make this a clip because I think it's going to be a funny clip. When somebody typically complains that their class isn't good, it's because they go out of the way to pick the singular worst class because they only play for personal fun and not group content or dealing with other players. They solely want to play what they think in their personal opinion is a fun class to the detriment of everybody else. And the people that pick a fun class to the detriment of everybody else don't care about passing. They don't care about playing well. They don't care about performing because they are just there to have fun solely for themselves. So back in Classic Original, bringing a Boomkin or Rep Paladin wasn't worth it because the only people that played Boomkin or Rep Paladin were either Giga Chads who were really good or bad players who wanted to play a class that nobody would bring because they brought no utility or efficiency to the run or the guild. So a Season of Discovery is not as bad, but there are certain people that pick a bad class, but because they pick a bad class, they're also typically a not very good player. And when someone that's not a good player picks a bad class because it's their role play or their fantasy, they are dragging down the whole raid and experience. Now that's that's a good clip in my opinion. I'm gonna mark that one down for my editor. 115. Well let, let's go back to this. I just I just wanted to say that. I just wanted to make that. But I thought it was a valid point. I do think it's a valid point. Let me write this down here. 150. Now, going back onto this. Um, no, if you want a quest for gold, the end game, you don't. In fact, you don't want to do any quest in 60. You also got to think what you will need more pre quests of 500 to 600 to 1000 gold from the rewards. It do be what it is, sadly. Uh, uh will I, I don't say your name. Is that an I or an L? Oh, yeah, it's an I. We are true. We are I'm saying it incorrectly. I am guessing you are either Scottish, Irish, or Scandinavian, or you're from the Baltics with a name like that. Or you just pick the nice sounding uh, username and I'm reaching. Like I'm, I'm reaching like a, pup, a hand on a puppet's ass. Okay. Do you need gold? or xp also factors in the metric i wrote metric so wrong there but yeah so this is this is my personal opinion on phase four this is how i would b tell people to play um and i know this isn't exactly what most people want to hear but phase four is at most 12 weeks away. So you do need to prepare if you are trying to prepare for being first lockout, stuff like that. Um, should you prepare for phase four? If you want to make first lockout, because every lockout, every, uh, because every new first lockout is Thursday to Tuesday. 
that you need to prepare consumes gold um getting 61st so you can farm the good locations before bots and other people Melee with Raid is a decent place for Hunters at the moment. Uh, MM is in high demand because they bring so much to the Raid. Melee in general is just for bar. We get a scaling group buff synergy. I use Melee for farming and range for Raiding because it's more fun. It's a valid point, Blake, because it's a good way to do it. Um, so, if you have 10 more weeks to grind, you need to have about... 2k to 3k gold if you don't farm consume the resources for a new crafting profession new epic um craftable uh, gold for new consumes i.e um blah etc And then gold for hundred percent for epic mount. God damn, I do not too much. And other extra thunder fury and sulfurous will cost an arm and a leg. Um, so when you have things like this, small little things across the board, you do need to start preparing. Oh. You need to frequest prepare if you want um, to race or uh, get first lockout. Black Lotus will be so expensive first week. Oh, absolutely. Black Lotus is going to be disgustingly expensive. 100 Arcanite bars get crafting. Ugh, it's going to be disgusting. I care replacement on Living Flame. Uh, US exclusive, but you're getting what, min 100 gold a raid. As a melee, you are spending 100 gold per raid and consumes. If you're not farming your own consumes, you're spending 100 gold per raid to consume. They already said they're not doing that, Galshin. They said that it's going to stay as it is. So, sadly, it's going to be at the current state. Got my transmutation mastery this morning. The must raid before twos on a Thursday launch for first lockout creates a lot of FOMO. It does, but they're not going to change it. They already said they won't. They already said they're going to leave it as is because it's a good ballpark. If you sweat, you get one extra lockout. If you don't sweat, you get to the next lockout anyways. So the way they designed it is it caters to both groups of people going forward and it, it is what it is like welcome to classic world of warcraft get ready to ground boys because if you're not grinding you're paying and if you're gonna pay guess what you still gotta grind you want to pass get grinding and if you're not grinding you're buying gold and that's bannable if you get caught if you get caught honestly any any gold millionaires in chat want to give a nice donation to your local small streamer i'm taking donations right now in game i'll log on crusader strike us my bank account ready um shit's gonna be expensive though nonetheless all i'm saying is all i'm saying um may, yeah it's only 100 gold if you clear without wipe. If you clear without wipes, keyword there. Most guilds should be at the no wiping phase at this moment. If you're gonna pay, you're gonna pay me because I grind. Yeah, you, people are paying somebody. You're either paying with your time, or you're paying with your uh, or you're paying with your time, anyways, or with your credit card. But you shouldn't be buying gold. That shouldn't be like you know bad don't buy gold bad buying gold is bad don't do that it's mean of you i don't know why i went with a weird voice like that it's this raid i consumed 100 gold worth of consumed with five wipes are not so bad hey that's actually not bad kaiser my my tank was complaining because he spent 300 gold week one 
300 gold week one. How much you need to hit cap for phase three for PvP? Ooh. Sod PvP calculator. Not that one. On a calculator. Here we go. So, rank 7 to character level 60. So, 260,000 honor to rank 940%. So 60% is 140. So 142. 400,000 honor. And I should actually do that for EVP rank rank 7 zero percent to rank 10 zero percent is three hundred and ninety eight thousand honor good luck three hundred and ninety eight thousand honor how many tokens is that actually 250 honor per silver in stv calculator Phase four uh, on a farm prep. At an estimate of 10 silver, or let's just say 20 silver, because min max group. Eighty STV events. Ten times seven. Five. Let's say eight. Five hundred and sixty STV events left till phase four. Give or take. Um, yeah. This is the honor farm for phase four, by the way. Um. Yeah, no, people aren't going to be wiping an STV anymore. STV is going to be much easier. Um. It'll take like 11 gold, 16 gold from STV. 16 gold to hit, um, rank 10. Because, um. There we go. Um, yeah, it's honestly better to not even bother with STV. Like, STV is not worth it, in my personal opinion. Personal opinion. Don't bother with STV. Wait till AV and sit in AV for 20 to 40 hours. To farm your 400k honor. This is my opinion. Yeah, it's it's um 
it, it does become a situation of as horde turtle av as alliance don't play av and just go instead of doing av as alliance forget av and just go straight to warsong gold to ab like it's not going to be a great experience for anybody but um it's a lot of honor necessary to rank up yeah av is going to be the better way to like farm honor because even a bad av is going to be better honor than a good stv and that's assuming your group even does well or whatever um yeah if horde doesn't turtle it'll be way better honor if horde turtles it'll be good honor for horde but not for alliance and alliance will keep afking out because it's not worth it for them while horde keep farming more honor at middle and it'll be worth it for the horde but just camp incursions you're the reason incursions aren't fun parker get out of incursions Stop farming 8,000 honor per hour in incursions. Or go farm in Feralos or Hinterlands. Why are you farming in goddamn um, uh, Ashenvale? This man, it's honestly terrible. That's, even a, that's an even better point, Boston. You go to AB for even more um, for the reputation, item buffs, changes. They're fun for me. I'm protecting. Did the stream end? What happened? Are we good? Stream is good. Looks like we're back. Okay, we're back. We're back. All right. Okay, we're back. Ah, all right. Thank God. The internet just died for a second. God damn. Just cut off for a second. We good now. Little glitch. All right. We Gucci. We're, we're, we're cooking still. Stream ain't over yet. Um, he farms on an national level because no one can fight back. He likes picking on lower levels. <laughs> Drama in the chat. Put your money on Parker or Boston right now. Okay, but actually, let me let me poll chat real quick. Let me do a poll. Um, will honor be better in battlegrounds? or open world camping in phase four. Oh shit, I fucked it up. End the poll, I gotta do it properly because I'm stupid. Will honor be better in, in battlegrounds or open world? EVP in phase four. Open world battlegrounds. There we go. This is better. I screwed it up a bit. Apologies. There we go. Yeah, no, it's it's not gonna be yes or no. It was just more of a um got loading for a bit. We're good now. Okay, shit's all good. We're good. We're good now. We got the poll going, so we're good to continue. We're now going to move on to the next topic, which was the blue post and change logs. Let me check Wowhead real quick. Yeah, let's let's scroll down to it. Okay. It's better in open world something is wrong. Yeah, dude, just camp Thorium Point or Molten Core of Entrance. Molten Core Entrance camping is gonna be disgusting. People forgot all about that. PvP servers, per well, you can't purge anymore because of the um um the Chrono Boon. But even before Chrono Boon, remember fucking Vietnam and Molten Core? Whew, unfun. So. Buffs and nerfs. 
Bad Druid equals best tank. Um, Rogue DPS. 10% increase in DPS. Shaman tank. Less AoE bullshittery. Warlock. Buffs and wounds. Warrior. Open world and PvP is better. But no real raid change. So this is the changes coming to tomorrow. I'm pretty sure this is tomorrow, right? Um, undisclosed buff nerfs. Unknown as of now until Tuesday goes live. Okay. Now that Bear Druid is Mangal Nasa, they are pretty good. Yeah, no, Bear Druid is probably going to become the singular best tank. Living on my hand, they still got ganked for 30% and wiped my buff, so I camped the course of 15 kills. Oh. Oh, yeah, no. When you lose your buff due to something dumb, like you just get pissed and just sit out of corpse for a while. No, right now there's no like change to the patch notes. So tomorrow is patch notes. And it's going to be more than this. Um, um, it's closed in coming. So. Yeah, the meta tank is now available to both factions. Bad Druid equals best tanks cause Lacerate and Mangle can both be used. And Lacerate threat is 5x. So, you will never pull off a Bear Druid now for boss. So, like, if for all the warriors complaining that they can't, like, peep, they, they have to hold back as a threat, there will be no pulling off a bear. You will not you will physically not be able to pull off a bear. Like it is what it is, but you just won't be able to. Um overall the buffs are fine. There's no real nerfs. I mean shaman tanks, like the AoE got nerfed. Like that's not really great. But like overall the buffs are for the most part decent. Um it's it's a situation of there's going to be more mind you this isn't all like this isn't everything but this is as it is right now meh these are good for the game but they're not great uh well they are good for bear but like they didn't really there's not a massive amount of changes coming or nerfs or buffs so right now it's just middle of the road like these are decent changes decent buffs these are nerfs across the board it's it's okay um but there will be more tomorrow is going to be way more i can say as a matter of fact there's going to be way more buffs and changes tomorrow like i would put money on that i would genuinely put money on that like and if there isn't i would be surprised if there isn't more changes tomorrow, I would be genuinely surprised. So, we already discussed this. Will they add any more content? We discussed this. Like, all of this is discussed. So now, guys, we finally are moving on to the next discussion. Crackpot theory time. Ally Shamans and Horde Paladins. Where is it? Here we go. So, I turned my camera off. Season of Discovery, hints of Tauren Paladins to come. Tauren Paladins are playing a bigger role. No, they, they didn't confirm they can't. They actually said they can. 
Nope. So I'm gonna bring up the notepad. I'm gonna do the death match here. Um, now how will this work? Let me explain. The resources necessary to make new classes for existing factions is a lot of work. But not impossible. If the classic dev teams... Uh... Yeah, no, no, I'm explaining. They can add that. But if they don't have a bigger dev team, next phase would literally just be Ford Pally Alliance Charm. So it's not worth the manpower. Yeah, there's, there's no messing with the talents. They can. You guys are missing what I'm saying. They can add it. It's more of a the manpower is not worth it. That's what people are forgetting. Is the manpower necessary to do it isn't worth the lack of content they'd be delivering for phase four. So for there to be new classes for Horde Ally they need more developers who can focus solely on new classes for Horde Ally. I'm, I'm literally certain Agron said that it's not worth the dev ban power and they likely wouldn't. Like, um, for the devs, Um, for the devs doing something and making it worth it is the hard part oh you meant that dave no okay i finally get what you're saying no no i yeah you are correct um i i finally understood what you're saying um so that that makes more sense in what you're saying. Okay. They have to separate the sod client from error because error and sod are tied to each other. Um, this is the major hurdle. Um, well, and dev time. I finally understood what you meant. Sorry, I completely misunderstood your point, Dave. When you said they can't do it, I was like, they can do it. It's literally just tweaking the like the, the, the code of the game and adding the animation. It's a lot of effort, but it's not impossible. Yeah, yeah, no, no I, I now get what you're saying. Galshin and Boston, I, I agree with what you guys are saying. You guys are correct. So, new client for just new classes equals not worth it. But, again, depends on the size of the dev team. If the dev team size drastically increases or blows up, It would be a huge like boon for the game overall. Like you guys can disagree with me, but separating sod from classic era, it, it just it does depend on how they do it, but it's a metric of the manpower to make the new client is a lot of manpower. Uh 
Um, they could do that too, Blade. They could change that around as well. But again, like, it becomes this whole metric of the amount of like time necessary and energy necessary to pull this shit off. Is it worth it to Blizzard for Season of Discovery? So. For Classic Plus or Season of Discovery 2, etc. It will definitely be a separate client. Because of Sod's popularity. So, this is my prediction. Yeah, they could just use the TBC client. They could do that. When there's a will, there's a way. Not sure if it's worth it though. Heck, they could add join the Horde Alliance NPC with some mutual trainers. That might be... No, that would still break the code, Daniel. I see what you're saying, but I still think that would fuck the code up irrecoverably. Um, at, at this point, they can't. At this point, they would have to separate Sod from Error. Or they would have to end, so end Classic. Or end Sod... And the new version make it a separate client. Again, um, can it happen in phase four or phase five? Yes, the future is definitely having. Dwarf Shamans, Horde Paladins. I am putting money that that's going to be a thing. I think they could, but I don't. I think the technical difficulties of moving an already existing current client would be problematic. So in the future, yes. Right now, maybe not. But I definitely see them doing this. Yeah, it was way before Sod was a massive hit. Sod is now a ginormous hit. Not just massive. Sod is disgustingly large. Let me make this a bit smaller. There we go. Okay, now we have more space. Yeah, well, here we go. Just gonna have more space for me to write and still be readable. Make my camera a tiny bit smaller. Okay, there we go. Um, thought is now massively successful. So, the dev resources should technically be higher. So, they should have a big dev team. Which means people working on moving the sod client separate, uh, well, away from error. Will they? Key question. Do you think they'll consider rebuilding the classic or for flying mountain classic plus that kyle right there is one million percent classic plus content like the world of classic is so fucked they made cataclysm so they could use the azeroth like classic is not tweakable it's so difficult because you can't fly around it because literally half the mountains don't have a backside you can't see anything so Sod client equals custom content equals good thing. The question is, Microsoft believe in them to make money? Well, that would simply just be. Uh, 
um, TBC prepack is now the sod client. Blood elves and Drenai, but no prepack quests, no outland. New talents, um, class fixes, etc. Would be the smartest choice. But then it's not vanilla classic. It's TBC pre-patch plus. So, yeah, so people want Blood Elves and Draenei. That would actually be good for the game. But the way it changes classes, how they work, specs, everything, the whole rune system, everything would be completely scuffed. So for the next version of the game, for Sod 2, Season of Mastery, Insanity, Madness, Season of Booty Cheeks, Season of Sally Whitemane, whatever they want to call it. Um... They would it would be a ver it would be TBC pre patch plus and I think it's the best thing to do in my personal opinion. In my opinion, that's what they should do for the game. But that's what's best for the game. Now, would the classic player base agree? I actually think they would. TBC pre patch, but classic content would be the best version of classic in my personal opinion. So, do I think it would be best for the game? Absolutely. fucking -lutely. Can you imagine level cap of 60? Um, slightly retweaked runes and everything, like no level 70 runes. TBC, just no outlands, level 60 cap. Molten Core, Blackwing Lair, AQ, Nax, New Raids, Hyjal, Grimbatol, all that stuff. But with TBC build. So we get to experience Classic Continuation or Classic Plus. But with the TBC version of the game. So we get better classes, better itemization, better builds, and overall will be better. Yeah, Akron believes in that for now, Boston, but will he believe in that forever? So that's my question is, he believes in that now for the spirit of class. But Classic Plus is Classic Plus. Season of Madness is Season of Madness. Season of Discovery is Season of Discovery. Yeah. So do I agree? Do I think that Agron's thinking long term? Absolutely. In the short term, I'm sure he believes that and he agrees with that and wants to escape with that. But in the long term, could I see that shit changing? Absolutely. Again, it does it does depend on what the classic player base thinks and feels in the long run. It, it is a situation of the player base wants one thing. And the developers see the statistics. What the player base wants and what they actually want are two separate things. And this isn't a situation of um, you think you do, but you don't. They literally have the data. Agron sees the data for classic players. He, he knows exactly how long to make the raids, how long to make the content, how long to make the phase, how difficult, how easy, how this, how that. Microsoft Game Engine coming? I mean, maybe. I already know we're getting a new like Microsoft Store uh, Battle.net combination coming in the future. I hope they add new runes that directly affect talent, tree, uh, talent trees. Chris, that would be pretty cool, honestly. A whole revamp of the talent tree would be kind of nutty. I, I, it, there is a valid validity to that. Um, I mean, eighty percent of classic players say they don't want changes. Yet, season of discovery is disgustingly popular. And season of discovery has so many changes, I literally cannot list it. So I get what you're saying, Chris. They want you want the uh, runes that change talents. I I agree with that. 
Hey, army brother, welcome to the stream. You're not late for the Copium session. I mean, you kind of are a bit late, but the VOD's always there, so you can head back and watch the VOD. Gonna be a nice VOD. We covered a lot today, a lot of interesting topics, a lot of interesting things. Another great stream, as always, I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I... I feel like my streams are decent quality. I could be wrong. You guys could just be here for the Alex Jones rants. But I feel like my streams are decent quality. People are already quitting now because people feel like it's too much like retail on like phase one. If you go through the forums every 10 posts of someone saying it's not classic, it's retail. I saw that Boston. But I feel like that doesn't exactly... It's... I agree that people are quitting. I don't think it's enough people to make a big difference, in my personal opinion. Ooh, that's interesting, uh, Chris. That's a really interesting change they could go for. A rune that lets you add another level to your, your to your talent. That could be a huge hit, but... Yeah, people on the forums are always quitting, but people are quitting in Classic. I remember in 2019 when people said... Uh, phase two is bad. I'm quitting in phase two. Alex Jones is popular. For, he is popular for a reason. Um, one they could, the one thing they could do is see how extra talent trees perform in retail once uh, war with incomes out, and then it might implement something in class in sod. They could do that. I do absolutely see them doing that. I do see them looking at the metrics of both games and seeing how long does a retail player play classic and how long does a classic player play retail. Yeah, now the forums have been quitting for so long. It's insane. Yeah. Yeah, now the forums are so negative. Like, honestly, I want to meet some of these people and, like, actually ask them, what the fuck is going through your mind? How are you still playing this game and saying it's over, it's dead, it's dead, it's been dead for 15 years? Like, honestly, I... If we go to the Battle.net for Battle forums right now and we click on a random hater and go through his posts, I bet you 80% of his posts are complaining. That's a valid point, Boston. I see what you're saying. Forums are quitting in 04 pre-patch. I actually remember reading that stuff up, Galshin. People were quitting because this isn't the Warcraft 4 I wanted. We wanted Warcraft 4, not this shitty EverQuest knockoff. I remember those threads because I looked back at them in 27, 2007 and 2008. Instead of TBC pre-patch for level 60, they can just do classic plus of 70 with classic hero talents and stuff. That, that, would be, that would be a good way to do it as well, Almo. There's so many ways they can do it and break it down that overall, the game is in a situation that is good. It's genuinely looking like the game is doing good in the long term. In the short term for phase three, uh, yeah, it's not as good as it needs to be. Um, but the way I view it is, um, even if it's not the greatest thing, um, I just think it doesn't matter in the long term because I, I genuinely think even if you quit for phase three, you'll be back for phase four. If you quit for phase four, you'll be back for phase five. If you quit for phase five, you'll be back with classic plus. If you and nobody's quitting classic plus. Like honestly, everyone's here for classic plus. People might not be here for season of madness or season of insanity or season of discovery two, but every single person is gonna come back for season for classic plus. Um there's a lot of archive posts of EverQuest fan saying no, the, no death penalty was casual trash. I, yeah, that, there was a lot of that. Um, um, the same person was posting now about quitting. Probably also has another post about quitting in 2019, about in 2015, and one quitting in 2009. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, Paladin Deathmatch could be absolutely be a thing. I, I would see that for sure. Um, if they make Classic Plus retail time walking, people will. That's interesting, yeah. They, I could see that making Classic players go to retail for that alone, but I'm not sure if they would. <laughs> I know because I'm that person, I've quit several times. Yeah, I've quit several times too. Just so you guys know, I literally came back to become a full-time, like, my most of my content is Classic. It's literally Classic Plus Season of Discovery, Classic Plus Season of Discovery, solely because I literally only care about Season of Discovery and Classic Plus. 
I'm going to try War Within. I'm going to try WoW Remix. I'm going to try all those game modes. But your boy is a sod Andy. I am a classic plus Andy. I am here to play Season of Discovery and play Classic Plus over and over and over again because of how much I love this game mode. Saw archive posts about how Resident Evil is going to kill WoW in 04. Dude, every new phase when it was killing, like Arena was going to kill WoW in 06. Welcome to Classic. Putting Classic on the retail client would just be a PR disaster. People are weird. Even if it was 10 out of 10, it would be called trash for the client it's on. True. It would have to be in its own separate Classic Plus uh, client. They would have to move it to its own separate client so the Classic Era people stop bitching because their game keeps getting broken by, uh, by sod things. But everybody... If you would like to see more from me, join the Discord, follow my Twitch, follow my Twitter. Um, does my Twitter not exist? What's wrong with my Twitter? Let me see. Did I misspell it? Let me see. I wrote it right. It's just my Twitter doesn't work anyways. Um, or just follow my Twitter if you guys want. Here we go. Um, I am going to end the stream here. We've covered all the topics for the stream. But before I go, I just want to say thank you to everybody. I really appreciate everybody watching my stream. I'm going to be streaming tomorrow again, 10.30 a.m. EST. So if you do want to see that, same time as today's stream, give or take, essentially. Um, Classic Plus is going to be amazing. Season Discovery is amazing. And I can't wait to see you guys tomorrow. Hopefully you all have a fantastic morning, evening, or night. Thank you, everybody. Ebon Heart out. I love you all. Love chat. You guys are great. Peace out. Also, become a member if you want. It's a dollar at the cheapest. Pay as much as you want. That's that's for the extra guys who we want to be extra supporting. But anyways, peace out. Ebon Heart out. Love you guys. Adios.